All right, welcome to the live stream, everybody. Today is going to be slightly different than normal. As always, I will start with a little Bitcoin analysis uh, to get a feel for the overall market. But as many of you in the MDX Discord community already know, there's been a lot of altcoins really popping off lately. Uh, so I wanna mainly focus on altcoins today and uh, more specifically micro caps. Uh, as you know, uh, we've been talking about that in the group and uh, having some good luck with some of those. So of course, feel free to ask any questions about the settings and features on the MDX Algo indicators. As always, I'll do my best to answer them if anyone has any. Um, with that, feel free to give altcoin requests. I mainly want to be looking for bigger runners on the uh, four hour and daily time frames with the MDX algo indicators, but uh, I can definitely hop into de into degenerate time frames later if you wish as well. So yeah, with that, let's hop right into it. I don't know how many of you would have seen my video last night I posted, but I was talking about Bitcoin here and uh, you guys know I've been very vocal in the channel too that I'm I'm just not willing to flip bearish while we trade sideways in this range and stay above my purple line here. Uh, the support of this range, I just, I, I agree that we could definitely break this level and if we do it could be a fairly straight shot at least towards that 20k mark even. Uh, but we're really going to have to see because as I see it right now, even though this was a fairly short time, actually, I mean, on a four hour chart, that's a nice little bit of consolidation. So the fact is that we broke above that level and are just trading sideways again, allowing indicators to catch up to the price and that sort of thing. And as well, uh, just once again, we have this structure that forms. So we have formed a little bit of support below the price, even if we are going to drop to the downside. Uh, the Algo 3. Uh, I, seems to agree with me. This uh, Again, this is the four hour and the trend confluence. This is kind of what I was talking about as indicators are catching up with the price. And this is why I talk about time-based corrections is, you know, we were pulling so far away uh, from this confluence that uh, we just have to trade sideways for that long and let some of these, these EMAs catch up and that sort of thing. So that's kind of what I'm looking at right now. Obviously, we do have resistance up ahead. I am being cautious right now. I'm not in a Bitcoin long right now. Um, but just looking at this, I mean, the indicator actually just printed out this demand zone here. Uh, so we're going to have to see if it holds. It does look a little weak, just how we're flipped back under this 21 EMA here on the four hour. But again, we still have support of this range and I don't want to go and short right into support here because support is support until it's broken. It always looks weak until you get the bounce. So, I mean, I don't want to change my analysis on that for now. Uh, if we drop that level, you know, absolutely, I see reasons to maybe then you catch some sort of a bounce and short it down towards these levels. But as it stands right now, I'm just personally not willing to short. But that's just my own bias as well. I just play the long side better than the short usually. So that's just kind of, I'm looking more for long in pullbacks rather than uh, trying to short a reversal here. And as I was talking about last night, um, I've talked about this previously on my channel that, uh, you know, I don't pay much attention to altcoins very often. Uh, but w I did mention a few times in the past that when I will pay attention to altcoins is when Bitcoin has uh, absolutely exploded, uh, which is obviously what happened. And then my exact words were when Bitcoin blows up and then calms its titties. And that's exactly what I'm referring to is, uh, you know, we got that crazy run to the upside, but we never got a harsh rejection because if we got a harsh rejection, absolutely altcoins would have been just devastated if that happened. But when Bitcoin makes some gains like this, especially when it's a, a nice gains like this, which we haven't seen in quite some time in the crypto market, uh, after you see that many gains coming into the market and we're not giving them back, we're actually trading sideways from when was this? We've been in this range since January 20th. So I mean, um, this is quite a bit of time here and as Bitcoin is just trading sideways and the bears aren't taking control that brings that confidence and those gains that greed into the altcoin market and now we're starting to see some altcoins popping off and I, I know we've been uh, talking about a few in the in the discord there in the micro caps group. So I'm going to go over, I have three picked out right now I'm going to go over, but you guys, by all means, think of altcoins that you want me to look at. I already see a few uh, in the chat there, so I'll take a look. 
Um, but yeah, basically, like I said, I'm looking for four hours and uh, daily charts mostly. And what I really want to see right now is uh, the ELGO 3 printing some strong buy signals, much like what happened here. Uh, I was actually talking about this in the group. Uh, well, when I got into it here at about 18 cents, uh, I was talking about the fact that, you know, for such a low cap coin, I mean, I think it was only 4.5 million when I got into it, something like that. But the 24 hour trading volume was actually more than the market cap, just like it is right now. And that's where I said, uh, you know, BDP was trading at resistance here. It was just trading sideways, uh, facing a bit of rejection. But I said, if we break through that resistance, this thing is going to have momentum because there's so much volume there. And uh, that's absolutely what happened here. Um, I did close a third of my position, actually very close to where we are right now, except it was on the way up because I closed a third at about 125 or 120%, something like that, I think it was. But I mean, this thing really went for a run. I, I never seized the opportunity to take profits there just because, again, the market cap's so small that and with AI kind of being the hype of this these last month or so, um, this is an AI project. Uh, they've had an update recently or a launch or whatever i'm not a fundamentals guy you guys know that but um I, I do see reason why this could be a coin that continues to run and i'm not trying to make anyone fomo in or anything like that uh, i'm not trying to shill you anything uh, I, i'm i like i said i am starting to take profits i want to scale out of this position while it's doing well i've lived through two bear markets now um i've seen what can happen to altcoins as soon as things get dicey and when you're talking about these tiny market caps, I mean, anything can happen. I'm, I'm playing with very small amounts when I'm talking about these coins because uh, I, I see them as a gamble no matter how well the fundamentals look. I mean, Celsius looked good. Luna looked good. Everyone was all over those things. You never know what's going to happen fundamentally uh, unexpectedly. So I like to scale out when I'm seeing gains over 100% like that. So, But I mean, look at this first long signal from the ELGO 3. So not only that, the Oscillator 4 had a hidden bullish divergence here. The Oscillator 5 had a hidden bullish divergence uh, lining up just after that. And then we got this strong buy signal. And I mean, I'm sure at the time it probably may have even looked a little overextended. Actually, no, not too bad. Uh, you can see we actually just kind of closed above this structure here, got a retest and just blasted the hell off. I mean, that is an incredible move. But even if you take from where that long signal was, let's just clean this up a bit. I mean, what kind of gains did we get from that candle close, that candle body close to where we've topped out so far? That was over a 1,700% call. So, I mean, a lot of people are very desperate to short the reversal of this Bitcoin move. But while Bitcoin's just doing nothing, just trading sideways, that's when the altcoin market is starting to go off. And that's something, you know, I haven't paid attention to altcoins very much in uh, recently. But now that I have a little more faith in the market, I'm going to be watching them a little closer. And I mean, this is the kind of gains that, I mean, this week right here in this coin, uh, that's most likely a bigger move than Bitcoin is going to see from bear market bottom to bull market high. I <laughs> Just all in the co uh, course of one week. So there's so many gains to be made in the altcoin market. Like I said, uh, don't want to get too risky, uh, too FOMO-y when you're dealing with these tiny caps. Once again, I totally see them as a gamble, but just saying that, you know, this is something I think we need to pay attention to and just to have these cheat codes here, to have this indicator with such a beautiful uh, signal there. I even mentioned in the group chat, actually, I was like, you know, after we already pumped, what was it, 400%, 500, 600% here, um, you'd think we're overextended, but we got another strong signal. And from there, I mean, it pumped another 200%. So absolutely phenomenal how this is picking up um, that kind of move. I mean, this indicator caught it before I did, because I would, if I saw this strong signal, I would have uh, been a lot more likely to buy a lot heavier of a bag had we not already pumped, you know, four or five hundred percent or whatever. Um, I was quite conservative for that reason. But had I seen this signal, I mean, that's a very powerful tool for our trading belts, you guys. Um, so I just, yeah, basically 
that's what got me interested and I want to find some more low cap coins. Uh, maybe you guys have some that you're thinking of. But um, yeah, that's kind of what I was looking at at this one. Uh, that was BDP, Big Data Protocol. Um, next, I am going to look at a couple of coins that, uh, coins and music, uh, he's not in here. Um, someone in our chat pointed out these next two coins to me. Uh, one that I'm interested in here is Polex or Polyastic, uh, P-O-L-X. And once again, I mean, we don't have a daily signal yet. Uh, the reason why I'm so interested in this one and also why it's even more of a gamble, um, is this market cap. I mean, that's a $646,000 market cap. So this thing is absolutely tiny. Um, so obviously high risk, but once again, the trading volume is not bad. It has dropped off uh, yesterday. The 24 hour trading volume was more than the market cap. Once again, just uh, looking like a good signal, much like BDP, how I was talking about that. Um, so yeah, those were a couple things I was looking at for this coin. Uh, again, a total gamble, uh, <laughs> a boomer bust kind of a play. Uh, if it goes to zero, I'm comfortable with the losses. Um, that's just how I look at these plays. I'm, I'm not too, I, I play, the, the way I trade with leverage and the way I trade spot are very different. Um, the way I'm looking at these, like I said, is just uh, whatever I buy, 100% gamble. Either it's going to do several multiplications or it's going to go down 90%, 99%, whatever. So I just wanted to look at a few coins like that. I mean, uh, so looking at the structure here, we did break above this little bit of flat resistance we had on the daily for this coin, for example. There is no daily uh, long signal yet here, but the four hour has definitely had a few. The four hour has been looking juicy on the ELGO 3, uh, basically right along the trend confluence there. What kind of, uh, just since the last signal here, let's just say from down here, I mean, it got over a 50% pump. So, and like I said, the market cap of this is uh, well under a million. So, I mean, it obviously has room to run. Uh, but again, that's just a higher risk kind of a thing, because even if this thing gets a pump, I mean, it's going to take nothing to just <laughs> devastate the price again. I mean, with such a small market cap, it could easily just pump and dump. But uh, that's just one reason why I'm watching this coin right now. I really want to see the daily get a strong buy signal soon. You can see we had some hidden bullish divergences here. Um, the oscillator four up here was showing trend exhaustion, but I mean, these bands just blew up separated so i mean i think bdp did the same thing actually um yeah basically same thing we had the trend exhaustion and then the channel or the uh bands here really divided there and we got one hell of a breakout so that's kind of the signal that i'm looking for on polex here um next another one that was pointed out to me would have been this cix 100 it's some sort of a crypto index um obviously it also had a beautiful strong buy signal on the daily here and uh let's just i don't think i saw anything about the market cap on this one actually let's just um, see if any useful info comes up here uh, no, not really, and not very good trade volume either. So, um, I don't know. It had a nice signal there on the daily for the Elgo 3. What did we get here from candle body close there? It got, well, a 70% pump. So, once again, just even though this is a total shit coin with barely any volume backing it up or anything like that, I mean, these strong buy signals on these low cap coins on the daily just seem so powerful. And I think that's a tool we really got to take to our advantage right now. Um, so yeah, I'm just drooling thinking about getting one here on such a low cap coin like this because I always feel like I'm late to the party. And just that it's broke this little bit of structure, I don't see why it couldn't go for an absolute rip if it gets that signal there. I mean, you can see um, we've obviously broke above the trend confluence here. That would be the three day this uh, squiggly red line here just absolutely exploded from that even basically came back and retested it here but um, yeah I think that's definitely one to keep on our radars here um, yeah I'm basically going to start checking out a few requests if you guys want me to look at some uh, first request was fitfi 
And that was on KuCoin, you said. This is another one that, yeah, I think absolutely it looks like it's getting ready to pop off. I mean, it did have this reversal warning, well, two of them here, uh, right along the trend confluence there. But we are holding this EMA so well right now, and we're getting some hidden bullish divergences. Uh, the oscillator 4 is kind of in no man's land. Um, I really have no reason to think it would need to dump or anything. Because, I mean, nothing even too devastating happened from this bearish pivot right here. So just kind of a neutral territory there. Um, yeah, if we can get some kind of a close, even if we closed above these wicks here, um, I think that would be in a very powerful position and we start closing above the trend confluence. I think it's only a matter of time till we get that daily strong buy signal again. And uh, again, just look the hell out. I, I want to try and uh, let's just see what the market cap is of that. If CoinGecko has it here. A little higher market cap, I guess. Hey, 37.4 million almost. Um, good trade volume, I guess. Uh, almost 9 million per day. Um, yeah, I mean, obviously market caps can go a hell of a lot higher than that. Um, I'm personally, I'm kind of feeling like a degenerate. I'm not, I'm not scalping the short time frames on Bitcoin. So now I got to play the penny stocks of the crypto world. <laughs> but uh, I mean, whatever, it's been working out. So um, yeah, I absolutely see reason why this could blow up here. And what kind of targets are we looking at? Let's say we go from here to our kind of looking at some next resistance here. Yeah, over 100% pump if we hit those targets. Um, let's really zoom out on this thing. I mean, obviously things could go a lot higher if this market does stay healthy for the next, I don't know, let's say even a few months or whatever, we get a very nice bear market rally here. Um, why couldn't these low cap coins, uh, hit some of these higher resistance levels? I mean, you're looking at maybe a 500% pump here. So yeah, I think that's absolutely a coin to watch. I, I just see so many altcoins right now forming these rounding bottoms and I mean that's just it's just playing out time and time again I mean let's just go back to BDP here um, perfect example here you know like we just had that beautiful rounding bottom it basically flatlined and then just absolutely exploded just like crypto loves to do um, I don't necessarily think we're starting a bull market or anything like that, but I think the getting's going to be good right now for a while. As, again, as long as Bitcoin stays healthy, especially trading sideways like this, um, that's just beautiful for altcoins to do their thing. And um, I, I just think that in, even in a bear market rally like this, let's say we get shut down at 30K or, you know, I've been talking about that 48K level. I, I don't know if we're necessarily going to get that high, but... Well, my point is there is gains to be made throughout this market um, that are equal to an entire bull market. So, I mean, uh, this rally that we've been having is nothing to scoff at here. Um, what's some more? Uh, Matic. What's Matic doing? Yeah, Matic looks quite nice there. I love how the market flow is supporting the price right there. Uh, and again, this is a daily. We have the 21 EMA curling to the upside, the three-day trend confluence curling to the upside. So everything's looking quite good there. Uh, the oscillator four and five are starting to look a little bit uh, bearish, a little bit toppy looking with some regular bearish divergences, some big red dots, but... I mean, I, I like to trust price structure first, and uh, I like to look at indicators second as confluence. So, I mean, yeah, I guess right now we are technically kind of getting, well, I shouldn't say getting, it's still early, um, but potentially a bit of a swing fail, especially if, let's say, we ended up having this wick above, and uh, let's say the next candle gets rejected here. Um, I think, yeah, maybe it's time for a little bit of a pullback here, for example, but um, I just love the way the indicators are looking on so many coins right now. Let's hop over to the four hour. Yeah, just look at this. I mean, on a four hour, that those are nice moves there. So, I mean, these strong signals are absolutely crushing it. Matic is a, a much larger cap altcoin. So a 40% move is very nice. Um, on the four hour, we're starting to see some warning signs, obviously. Um, 
Yeah, we got these reversal warnings and again, kind of trading right at the resistance level that I just pointed out. So something to watch for there. But again, the market flow looks like it's supporting the price. The EMA is supporting the price. The trend confluence, we're a little bit, uh, getting a little bit far away from it. But I mean, we can get a hell of a lot further than that. So gonna have to see what happens I mean especially that we are closing above these candles back here at least as well these candle bodies are all holding it as support so I mean I I know I've been very vocal about this in the past uh, for I don't know several well the last month last two months whatever that I am not willing to short anything right now I just don't have the balls for it I I'm not confident shorting right now. I would rather sit out and have nothing happen and just wait for a better long opportunity uh, than I have with any interest in shorting right now just because I think there's so much momentum on the bull side right now. Whatever happens, I, I mean, another thing is to one thing that I love to talk about on my channel is uh, quite often the way I use news is not so much trading the news or anything like that, but really notice when the news doesn't affect the market. I mean, we still have that crazy inflation. We still have Jerome Powell flapping his gums about God knows what. And like, honestly, I just don't care. All I know is I see a bunch of people getting bearish on the news and stuff like that, but the price isn't reacting that way. And at the end of the day, it doesn't matter what should happen in the economy. Um, the charts aren't going to lie. I, I mean, if you might be later to the party if you're not willing to play the news. Sure, you might have to wait for that structure to change in the chart, but eventually that structure will change. You start setting lower lows, lower highs, and then it's time to start shorting bounces and that kind of thing. So uh, that's just the way that I look at it anyways. Obviously, to each their own. Not, not at, <laughs> Barely anybody has the exact same trading style. I mean, everyone has their own thing that works for them, and that's just my personal opinion about things. So... And while we're at that, obviously none of this is financial advice. Always do your own research, form your own opinions. Um, what else can we look at here? Um, could you explain on the oscillator for what the ribbon color and width indicate? Um, I can take a guess. <laughs> I don't know for sure. I assume kind of the wider the ribbon, uh, the more momentum it has uh, the color would definitely be a shift in momentum uh just like the candles here obviously as momentum changes you see the colors change as well and that would be the same with the ribbons up here i'm sure um the thickness of the ribbon i assume it's much like an ichimoku cloud or that kind of thing like just uh just a little more momentum and as soon as we see that momentum, we see it starting to narrow, it might be getting ready to reverse. That's kind of how I'm looking at it anyways. If I'm wrong about that and anyone has more, uh, a better grasp of the oscillator for, that's honestly the one I probably use the least. I've started using it more, um, but... Yeah, if anyone has a better explanation, feel free. Uh, looking at the Oscillator 5 down here on the 4-hour, and this is Matic, we can see that the money flow, any time that the money flow on the 4-hour has been flipping red, um, it's been very quick to flip back green, and the green is lasting longer than the red, so I, I think there is more buy volume uh, on this trend as a whole. I think that looks fairly good. Looks like money's coming into the market. Um, curious if you check token unlocks and or inflation as for these as well as the technicals that's actually a very good point um one thing to keep in mind and I, i'm bad for doing this is setting dates for things and looking at those sorts of things but um you're absolutely right paying attention to token unlocks and stuff like that can definitely uh, be a powerful thing because Basically, no matter how much you believe in a project, I, I just feel like when those big token unlocks happen with early investors and stuff like that, I mean, the generally speaking, they should be up and quite often they're going to take profits. Uh, if anything, it opens up selling possibilities and it doesn't open up any extra buying uh, capabilities. So um, that can definitely be a bearish thing short term when uh, projects unlock more tokens. 
So yeah, paying attention to when those token unlocks, I think would be a good thing for sure. Um, and yeah, knowing, uh, also paying attention to the, uh, total supply, the fully diluted market cap, uh, all that sort of stuff. Absolutely. It's important. Um, check out soul. Looking to buy spot so far. It looks like 20 is a decent buy price. It has not run like the other layer ones. Um, Soul has had a pretty good run, in my opinion. I, I still don't think it looks bad. I mean, look at this is on the four hour. We have the uh, trend confluence catching up to the price beautifully right now. Um, you can see that the candles were flipping bright green, very close to the trend confluence, getting reversal warnings, getting trend exhaustions. Oscillator 4 at the bottom of the bands, getting trend reversal uh, signals here. The oscillator 5 getting big green dots and uh, regular bullish divergence there. So, yeah, I mean, Seoul doesn't look too bad in my opinion. I'm not, I mean, I would have liked to see it take off quicker. Uh, the fact that it's coming back down right now, it might be showing a bit of weakness. But again, support is support until it's broken. And honestly, with Seoul, I'm kind of looking at support as down at this level um, because we had our high. We got some higher highs here. Lowest point between them is right here. So that's kind of what I'm looking at for support right now. Um, I think it looks okay. I, I know Sol, Sol was one of the ones I was looking at on my own channel, and I pointed out how bullish it was on the weekly, and I never bought anything, and I'm regretting it. But uh, this was absolutely perfect with Solana on the weekly. We had this bullish reversal on the oscillator 4. The Elgo 3 was bright green with uh, got this reversal, cat or the little blue triangle there. Uh, had the big green dot, uh, just a lot of green going for it on the weekly here. So, I mean, let's say even from that potential pivot point that we got on the Elgo 3, I mean, it got about 140% pumps. So Solana has had a pretty good move. Um, I absolutely think it can go a lot higher because, I mean, obviously it has in the past, even to the trend confluence, I mean would be another 100% move, and that would actually line up pretty beautifully with this resistance back here. It would actually be perfect. Um, and yeah, as far as a weekly time frame goes, that would be a perfect lower high because we have our low here, we have our lower low here. Highest point between the two is right there. That's lining up with the weekly trend confluence. So yeah, there uh, might be a bigger move in the tank there. And again, if, if Bitcoin stays healthy and the altcoin markets keep pumping, I mean, absolutely, it could go a lot further than that. I mean, it obviously has been a lot higher in the past. I mean, when you're getting down near $20 and, I mean, it used to be worth over $200, there's some big gains to be made there. I don't think Solana's going anywhere. I know it's had its issues and it's had its FUD in the past, but I, I just think it's too big to really disappear at this point. Um, uh, what else was mentioned? I think I saw XRP. XRP. Let's check out XRP. XRP Army. I'm I'm too butthurt about XRP. I I prefer not to even think about buying it because I owned it when it was worth over three dollars and I never took any profits because I was new to the game and I didn't know anything. <laughs> and uh, I I definitely held that through the entire bear market basically. And it uh, I'm a little butthurt about it. So I don't like XRP. <laughs> that and I just I really do think it's had its big moment in the sun. Um, but we can still do some analysis on it for sure. Again, I'm not a fundamental guy either. I know they had their court case. Um, I, I know there's talks of them being involved with a whole bunch of shit globally, but I don't know. That's all above me. You guys know I just like drawing colorful lines and trading them. So I uh, had this nice breakout. Again, this is the weekly, so that's a big time frame. Uh, facing a little bit of resistance now. Let's zoom into the daily here 
Ooh, I like the way the uh, indicator looks here, to be honest. Uh, I like, I mean, we did get that potential reversal there, but I do like that we're above the daily 21 EMA and that we did get this bullish cross with the uh, trend confluence. So we got the three-day confluence just a little bit below the price right now. I wouldn't be too surprised if there's some buys on the four. Yeah, right along the trend confluence right now, basically. Um, even had this little blue triangle here as a potential reversal right, right along that trend confluence on the four-hour chart. Yeah, XRP might go for a little rip. Um, obviously, I think a lot hinges on Bitcoin right now. But uh, if Bitcoin just keeps trading sideways and doesn't get that dump that a lot of people are calling for and it just keeps consolidating, I mean, I think altcoins are just going to keep ripping. As long as there's that confidence, that little bit of hope in the market, um, yeah, I, I think that altcoins will keep doing their thing as well. Um, do I have an opinion on best exchange to trade micro cap cryptos? Uh, I was just convinced to get on KuCoin just a couple days ago from someone else in the group, in the uh, micro cap group there, or micro gems, whatever it's called. Um, I was told to check out KuCoin and I have seen a lot of DGen micro cap coins on there. So yeah, I think it was worth the 10 minute sign up, um, uh, sign up process i guess it was 10 or 15 minutes i had my funds over there and ready to play with a little dgen gambling fund uh, ubx kucoin see kucoin 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 oh yeah i was looking at this one yesterday i saw that you mentioned it in the chat there what's on what's the daily looking like no buy signal no strong buy on the daily hey i, I feel like it should have one quite honestly i mean uh we all we have that same rounding bottom you know and uh with that we got the bullish cross on the daily trend confluence um what else is going for it right here we have we do have these reversal warnings but i mean those will appear when trends start to get a little ridiculous like this i mean we we saw what bitcoin did on its rally that it was always looking extended on the indicators um and i just like to look at strike uh, price structure first as i was mentioning so the fact that we broke above this resistance here kind of got a bit of a bull flag and now we're consolidating on top of that old resistance as new support um, as well, that was our low back here. So it's nice to see we've reclaimed that level. Uh, market flow supporting the price, 21 day EMA supporting the price. Uh, again, that trend confluence cross. Uh, yeah, I don't know, that, that looks good. Yeah, things are looking a little bit, um, well, actually the oscillator four looks like it's kind of a no man's land because it had a bearish pivot actually at this level, but it barely caught any steam there. Um, yeah, I don't know. I think that looks beautiful. What kind of a UBX? Let's check out some, some data. Why do I, is it, um, which one is it? It's not even on here. Maybe I'm just dumb. <laughs> Either way. Uh, this looks like it's absolutely primed for a big run. Just like I, I think all so many altcoins look so juicy to me right now. I mean, let's just see what kind of gains some of these targets would be. Like, let's say we got some resistance up here. I mean, that's an 80% move away. Um, we obviously do have this resistance right here. Um, so that's right now where it has topped out. So again, there is obviously a couple... Uh, little warnings there, but I mean, I, I just think as long as, I keep saying, as long as Bitcoin's healthy, not getting rejected super hard, and the market stays healthy, I, I think coins like this are just primed to explode. 80% uh, to that level, 200% um, to this level, 500% to this level. I mean, so many of these coins, the important structure on these charts is so far away that there's just room for such wild swings right now. 
I mean, just as uh, I don't even know if this would seem realistic because I, I love to look for those 618 rejection points for the bear market rallies. I've never back tested this on altcoins. I've only looked at this on uh, Bitcoin, for example. Uh, but let's say that does happen. I mean, you're looking at a 23x. Yeah, I don't want to throw that kind of hopium out, out there at this point. But the point is, a lot of these charts have a crazy amount of room to go. Um, how on earth do you choose which altcoins to go for when there are so many to choose from and the technical look kind of similar on quite a lot of those? Oh, that's just it. Honestly, um that's one thing I have a problem with is I don't follow fundamentals at all. So I don't know which altcoins are worth looking at. Um, so basically what I did with BDP, for example, was uh, I was looking for something when altcoin season came around. I wanted to get involved with something AI based uh, because that chat GPT or whatever the hell it is. Uh, I mean, AI just seems like it has so much hype around it right now that I wanted to get into something AI related for an altcoin. I wanted something that's a low cap. I wanted under 10 million because um, I'm looking at it as my altcoin gambling degenerate fund. Uh, so I was looking for those micro caps. Um, so that's kind of what caught my eye here. And on top of, like I said, with that tiny market cap, it was like 4.5 million when I bought. Um, Again, the the 24 hour trade volume was more than that. So I just felt like it had so much momentum if it did break this resistance and it did. So again, this was this was 100 percent technical based. I know nothing about the uh, launch that they had recently or anything like that. I I just like to look at charts. I don't know anything about it. Like I said, whatever I lose, if it if it's a rug, then so be it. But the fact that there was a lot of trade volume there just gave me a lot of confidence in it. Because uh, there's other coins. I'll show you another one, for example, that I have followed for actually uh, since, oh boy, a year and almost probably a year and a half at this point. A coin that has performed horribly, even though it has... Uh, BMI, Bridge Mutual, it is uh, a decentralized insurance company. I've actually been following them for quite a while and they do have a working product. They have for a long time. You can basically insure any crypto. You can insure your stable coins, insure against uh, rug pulls. Uh, you can basically insure yourself on anything crypto related and they have a working product like that, but they've still performed so poorly price wise. I remember this thing used to be $5 a coin. Now it's under two cents. Um, but the thing is, I, I don't know if it has any tokenomics going for it. Like to me, it seemed like when I was looking into it a little bit, uh, it seemed like it would be good for like f yield farming and stuff like you can provide insurance you can insure your own stuff you can do all of that kind of stuff um but it has horrible trade volume and i think that's one reason it wasn't able to pick up any steam yet um that being said i mean even this thing the elgo 3 is picking up on the four hour strong buy signals and i actually messaged some friends that have also been following bmi and i said i'm gonna be so impressed if this indicator is able to call a big pump on this coin because i just have no faith in it even though i, I do hold some of it um i i bought some at like 1.3 cents i think was the last time i bought uh but yeah that was like a year ago almost at this point so kind of right at these levels it just broke out from um, but yeah, I would be so impressed if we ended up getting a pump on this just because, like I said, uh, what's the, this is another one that's a tiny market cap. Uh, yeah, under a million dollar market cap. It's actually performed quite well today. Um, but look at the trade volume isn't even, well, yeah, not even 10% of what the market cap is. So it, it has a really hard time holding its gains when it gets them. Uh, so I'm, I don't know, like I said, I own a little bit of this, but I, I don't really have a, a ton of faith in it, but I've owned it for so long that I'm just going to kind of hold on to it just in case. Cause also it's supposed to turn into a DAO. And once that happens, then people can change the tokenomics about it, uh, through a voting process and that kind of thing. So, 
Um, I do like that they have an actual working product um, that you can use, so there's that. I just don't know how well the how good the tokenomics are, and without trade volume, I just don't know how much faith I have in it. Um, that's just an example of something, just a way I look at altcoins, I guess. Um, yeah, it, it's hard to pick because there's so many out there. There is well coins there's 12 point almost 12.4 thousand different crypto coins on coin gecko and i know coin market cap i think has over 20,000 and who knows what else is out there there's literally tens of thousands of coins out there so yeah i i tend not to look too deep into tech into fundamentals because you just don't have time to uh, obviously there's some that you just happen to hear about on social media and stuff and then Okay, maybe then it's worth looking into the uh, the fundamentals about it, but I'm just not a fundamental guy. I just like to draw lines and yeah, just kind of what I'm doing with uh, Polex here. I know nothing about it, don't know what it is, but I like that we broke some structure. I like it's a tiny market cap. I like that the trade volume is okay for how small of a market cap it is. Um, that's all I really care about. If it goes to zero, so be it. Um, SRK on KuCoin as well. Again, KuCoin. <laughs> Spark point. Um, on the daily, hey, the daily did have that strong buy signal right after a hidden bullish divergence. That's interesting. That's exactly what I like to see. I, I That's what I'm looking for right now and hoping you guys point out is dailies with these strong buy signals i mean if it does anything even even half even 10 percent of what B, uh, bdp did uh, i would be a very happy man what kind of targets are we looking at from these levels um, obviously we're we have been trading right at resistance but we break that level i mean we're looking at you know 100 percent pump 175 i mean 400 percent pump i mean well yeah we'll see again the health of the market but once again big rounding beautiful bottom there i mean we just see it time and time again and then all of a sudden you get one of these um what is srk yeah under a three million dollar market cap so tiny market cap trade volume is not great um that's quite low but again that that is how you get those big spikes as long as you time them right just just remember that that means that someone can pump and dump that that uh coin very easily i mean someone with deep pockets could very easily push that price d back down is just something to pay attention to i guess but um Again, I just trust structure more than anything else. I don't see why anyone would take, you know, if you're getting a big ass breakout on a weekly time frame or a daily time frame, I don't see the reason why they would just only take 100%, for example, or 50% and crush it back down. I just don't really see the reason in that when they could let this run, especially with a low liquidity like that. I mean, People seeking that liquidity could be waiting for people to start um, FOMOing in and up at these levels and kind of start selling there, for example. Um, yeah, I, I just think those strong buy signals right now are worth considering, especially with the hidden bullish divergence there with it. Again, know nothing of the fundamentals. Uh, just looking at it uh, from the indicators, for example. Um, yeah. That's what I'm looking for right now. Um, Doge. Let's check out Doge. Everyone's favorite. <laughs> um, it does have the market flow. Uh, that might be starting to flip. What does the four hour look like? Getting very close to that trend confluence on the four hour chart. And we do have that potential double bottom there. Um, very small, but we obviously, yeah, kind of, 
I guess this whole level here. I mean, we got support that whole range. And then, yeah, even if we drop that, we do have the trend confluence down here. So Doge, I think, yeah, once again, just going to follow the rest of the market, in my opinion. Uh, let's look at the daily again. What is the market flow is kind of right around the candle body currently, I think. Uh, we do have the 21 EMA providing, well, it should be support uh, as well. Once again, just like everything else, got that bullish cross with the trend confluence. You guys know the trend confluence is basically my favorite thing about these indicators. And normally I like I have way more experience with it on shorter degenerate time frames. I don't know how accurate it is on these longer time frames, to be honest. I should do a little back testing with that, but yeah. Definitely worth considering. I mean it did have this strong buy signal back here, even though we did flip that confluence here into that red squiggly. Uh it didn't last long. We got right back above it, so there might be a little momentum coming from this. Oscillator 4. Yeah, it had a bearish pivot, bearish divergence, but it never really gained any traction. That's kind of the thing is I'm seeing, once again, th indicators are looking overextended, but the price isn't reacting to it. So, yeah, there's these warning shots fired, but um, until the structure changes, I, d I don't know. Let's see what it looks like on a weekly. Just zoom out a little more. Weekly has that resistance. Not much for bright green candles on this one either. Uh, had some back here which failed. I mean, actually, that was probably a decent pump even. Yeah, that was even a 50% pump, I guess, when you're looking at the weekly time frame. That's uh, actually quite a significant move there. Um, Shebonk. Let's check out Shebonk. Um, would that be this must not be the right one um, s bonk uniswap this is oh what the hell Oh, I will open up your link here. Hopefully it's a good old-fashioned virus. <laughs> Just kidding. Um, the I won't be able to bring up my the Elgo indicators with this. Um, I'm not getting a clear picture from this, quite honestly. I mean, it, I do see a wedge it broke. I guess but if that I mean that could even come back down and retest that which would also line up with a double bottom potentially um what else can I say about oh this is only the 15 minute what am I doing here let's let's be adults here Oh, I hate not being on trade view. <laughs> um, daily. There's not a lot of history there. I, I would love to see a break of this level. If we had a bit of horizontal resistance here. I mean, if we were able to close a candle above that level, I think it would be in a nice position to take off a lot higher. Um, four hour... It is getting down, I mean, towards some horizontal support. I would definitely, yeah, there's maybe something like that. Maybe some kind of uh, a pendant forming. I could see that being a thing. In which case, if it did break to the upside, you usually break out about two thirds of the way through a pattern. Um, 
from current levels. This is a lot of theoreticals right now. <laughs> I'm not saying this is going to happen, but something to watch for would be, if, especially if we got a third touch point of this resistance here and then broke out of this pattern. I mean, from where we are right now, a measured move would be two, closer to 300%. So that could be a nice juicy one. As it stands right now, I don't have a ton of confidence in it just because there's uh, there's a lot less price history here. Um, actually, something I would be interested in seeing would be just kind of this kill zone back here, just looking at the wick down to the candle bodies of this high back here. I mean, that could absolutely end up turning into support. That would be an interesting buy zone there. So it's a possibility. Um, I just don't know anything about it. I don't have the indicators here to back up my opinion about anything. Maybe there'd be a nice demand box there or something like that. Um, yeah, what else do we have here? Oh, BDP. Uh, BDP today took an ass whooping, uh, by the way. Um, I mean, that's to be expected when these micro caps, like this is no reason for me to panic about the price here, even though it probably pulled back like 50%. What did we get here from the top? To the bottom of this candle was more than 50% uh, to the downside. And that's kind of the thing with these small cap coins. I, like I said, I treat spot buying these things much different than I'm going to be trading with leverage. Um, I'm more interested, like I said, the, the market cap of this is still so low on the grand scheme of things that I would be more interested in... Uh, just longing, uh, setting leverage longs if I was uh, looking to do anything here. Like I said, I took a little bit of profits off the table already, but I would definitely consider laddering back in. I actually should have set some uh, when we were trading. I should have been checking lower time frames, to be honest. Um, but I would be more interested in buying any of these levels uh, if we pulled back to that range. Uh, rather than panicking out of my position because, again, I, un I understand these micro caps are basically the penny stock of the crypto world, which is already the volatile market out there. So um, that's just to be expected out of these, especially when, like I said, I mean, this thing pumped from this long signal over 1,700% or whatever it was. Um, that's a very large move. So a 50% pullback, that's just something that you expect. But I don't think anything's wrong with this. Uh, that's just, if anything, I think it's just going to need to cool off a little bit, but we'll see. Uh, the Binance US wick the other day, I don't really have an opinion. I, I usually chalk that one up to someone accidentally fat finger to sell. Uh, someone with real deep pockets accidentally did a market sell or whatever, and just there was thin order books at the time or whatever, and they just caught a bit of a scam wick. I, I don't know. Um maybe it is a warning that the markets are going to go down to those levels but as it stands right now i'm just not taking it too seriously at this point um, let's go back to poll just because that's one that i've been watching and bought a little bit of uh oh the daily candles should have just closed did we get one? Oh, still didn't get one look at that though with this daily close we have now got that bullish cross on the trend confluence that just happened within this minute <laughs> so and actually beautiful that we did just barely close above yesterday's wick uh, i think that's a really good sign I think if we would have closed below this somewhere, it would be showing that we might be running out of momentum. But the fact that we actually closed above that is looking pretty good to me. Man, I hope this one grows legs. <laughs> I want that to be my next BDP, except getting in earlier. Uh, BTC 5 minute. Oh, did BC take a little BTC? Um, like I said, this four hour looks good on BTC to me. Um, 
I was actually predicting in the, this in the last stream, and someone had pointed that out, that as we got down to these levels, I was expecting the candles to flip into bright green as we were trading around these support levels. Uh, I was expecting the candles to flip bright green, and I was expecting a big green dot on the Oscillator 5. That's exactly what we got. Oscillator 4 got a bullish divergence there. Uh, Elgo 3 printed out this demand zone recently as we trade in sideways in it. The... Uh, Trend confluence here is curling to the upside again a little bit. Obviously, all my analysis goes out the window if we get one of those. If we break this level, I mean, look out. First, see if it's a swing fail. If we just wick down, hit the confluence, for example, and get back up, you know, we might be getting ready for a nice pump to the upside. But as it stands right now, um, yeah, that's the level I'm watching, about 22.3K. Uh, let's check the old five-minute. Someone wanted me to degen the five minute, and I love that attitude. <laughs> um, that looks pretty great to me. Uh, the fact that it's printing several, it, it just printed a demand zone inside another demand zone. Uh, that's generally a good sign as well. We got back above the EMA here. Uh, trend confluence, this would be the hourly trend confluence, and it hasn't really flipped all that long ago. So, I mean, consider that we might have to test this, get rejected from it a couple times. But if we get back above it right away, flip it just like we we're seeing on the dailies, then yeah, absolutely. I think it's uh, might be time to uh, move to the upside a little bit again. Uh, I assume people were getting very bearish today as we uh, traded towards this support again. But as it stands, I just, I can't flip bearish while we're holding support. We have to at least drop our current range. Even this upward sloping uh, trend line here, I, I personally wouldn't even give this too much credit. Like if we, even though we got a few touch points along it, even if we break that right now, I'm still looking at this support possibly coming into play or even just a little bit lower as a scam wick. But um yeah, I, I just can't flip bearish while we're trading in the same range we've been trading in for quite a while here. And uh, to see things like the five minute here, this was actually nice. I, once again, just seeing the candles flip in a little brighter green here, just seeing that candle change with the momentum there. Um, I actually look at this big ass demand zone. It's had it mapped out for a very long time here, apparently. But look how well it's respected. Every time we dip into it, you see the candles flip bright green and uh, yeah, get a very nice recovery from that level. So there must be a crazy amount of demand at that level right now. This is just a five minute, but um, yeah, those would have been very easy entries looking back. Yeah, that looks good. What do we got here? Maybe some kind of a pennant? Yeah, even got the three touch points there. So, I mean, that might have a nice little break. We're going to have to see. But, yeah, I just think the market's in a very good uh, situation right now. Hey guys, I just realized that I have been going for an hour. So, I'm going to wrap up the stream right away. Okay, one more. I got to look at tab. Uh, XTP. How could I forget everyone's favorite in the group here? Um, the daily does have the EMA currently uh, showing a potential reversal on the daily there. And as well, the market flow could end up being resistance here. We flipped below it. Uh, let's check out the four hour. Uh, we dropped below the EMAs, obviously just happened. Um, it's hard to say right now. Uh, Tap's doing the same thing as Bitcoin, kind of, where it's just kind of like it has pumped a crazy amount and then it's just trading sideways, so it's kind of consolidating. We see the trend confluence catching up to it. Uh, so this might be one of those times, again, where it just blew up way too fast. We got way too far away from the trend confluence and we had to cool off while we wait for indicators to catch up. That could absolutely be the case right now. Uh, let's zoom in a little further, the one hour. It does look a little rolly-overy. Uh, on the one hour, the trend confluence did just 
flip bearish. However, something to consider is it's already trying to, uh, well, for one, we got these bright green candles forming on the hourly as well, this trend exhaustion uh, looking like it might support the trend actually. Um, so that's something to consider. Also, uh, just like Bitcoin, I mean, we do technically still have support. I'd probably watch for support all the way down towards that level. Um, and that would just be basically we had our high here. We had our high here. Lowest point between the two is down here. So that's the support level I'm currently looking at. Um, how far of a drop would that be? That would be almost 10% away, but on a small cap coin like this, I mean, that's really not too far. Uh, let's check out some info on XTP. What's the market cap looking like? Holy shit, the market cap is uh, 60 million, so this has really climbed. I forget. What was it? When we first heard about it in this channel, wasn't it under a million? It was like 500,000 or something like that. Or was it more? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, either way, see, this one has pretty low trading volume as well. Uh, that's one thing I don't like about tap. Well, actually it depends how you play it. I know I've seen some people in the group talk about it and I've done it, uh, with XTP is I've just set fishing orders and you know, you can just cause the, the trade volume so low, you can catch these crazy wicks and be in an instant crazy profit. Um, but you just have to be aware that you might not be able to get out at the uh, prices that you want to. For example, right now, let's say you were thinking it's going to crash right now. You want to panic sell. Uh, the price might not actually be at this level. <laughs> you know, you might be panic selling down here, for example, just because there's such low volume with that. But um, yeah, 60 million to a 1 million trade volume. So that is a little lacking, but... Um, I don't know. There's a lot of influencers behind this one. This one obviously has a ton of hype, but uh, yeah, I I'm more so looking at smaller, more degenerate market caps when I'm thinking about my micro coins at this point. But yeah, that's definitely one to pay attention to moving forward, I think. Uh, with how many influencers are behind it, I mean, if Bitcoin does go into a crazy parabolic run, I mean, this thing is going to have such an amazing advertising committee. Uh, that it could definitely be one of those coins that just absolutely continues to blow up. 60 million isn't really a high market cap. I mean, it could easily hit a billion. Lots of projects do it. I'm not saying it's going to, but that could definitely happen. So, Yeah, and XTP is sponsoring people, so it's kind of going to be a give and take kind of thing. Um, if they're paying influencers and influencers are being there advertising committee i mean where does hype come from is basically influencers right so i mean they're going to be able to push these uh these lower cap coins quite a bit um like i said guys i think i am going to wrap up there uh just because these take forever to upload when they get over an hour like this i will when i end the stream i'll still hang out and shoot the shit or whatever while i upload stuff if you're not subscribed to my YouTube channel, please do me a favor and do that. Very close to 500 subscribers, so very cool there. And as well, I post stuff on uh, my Twitter quite often when I don't feel like taking the time to make a video or whatever. Um, what else? Uh, actually, let's just while we're all here uh, in the MDX community, let's take a look at the legend board here. I have to just because I see my buddy in here and I got to rub it in that I'm beating him right now. <laughs> um, no, but uh, seriously, guys, uh, for those of you here with me live right now, as well as people who may be considering trying out these indicators, uh, there's also these fun little bonus uh, legend board community, uh, for example, which is basically a fantasy portfolio league and the MDX Elgo dashboard. Totally free for the MDX community, just a fun little game with actual cash prizes, so that's pretty cool. Uh, I've decided that I'm going to start doing some giveaways on my channel moving forward if I win. Uh, some sort of a like, retweet, follow, subscribe with a random draw type of thing. I haven't decided exactly what I'm going to do, if it'll be Twitter or YouTube or what, but figure it'll help me grow and a lucky winner gets a little walking around money and also gives you legends in the community a second chance at some prize money if I do win. Uh, obviously don't have to. This was a YOLO pick, so I mean these coins could just get devastated just as fast. 
Uh, but yeah, make sure you're subscribed to my YouTube channel and following me on Twitter just to be on the lookout for that as well. And uh, with that, um, what else? I guess, yeah. Anyways, friends, obviously, once again, none of this has been financial advice. Always do your own research, form your own opinions. But if you appreciated this video, please do me a favor and hit that like button and subscribe. If the indicators I use interest you for the people not here live with me right now, there's a referral link for a 15% discount down below. And like I mentioned, that also gets you into the private MDX Discord and the Legend Board, which can actually pay for itself quite easily if you end up playing your cards right. And uh, yeah, it's very good supportive uh, community with a lot of great, excellent, active traders and that kind of thing. So yeah, get involved with that if you do. So with that, I'm out. Stay safe, my friends. Peace. Yeah.